couple of years ago, I built the Tom York HO scale kit, his classic kit of the pool hall and bordello. Uh, the bottom walls are made from hydrocal, and I've had several people ask me how I actually painted them. There's been lots of different videos, lots of different articles on painting hydrocal castings, but uh, I thought I would do mine. Uh, and just show how I do it. Uh, rather than sealing them with uh, paint or something like that, spray paint, what I do is I actually use a very thin coat of acrylics to seal the castings. It works very well for me. Uh, it just uh, does a very nice job. So that's what I'm going to talk about in this video. Now the particular colors I chose, I chose because they were ones I had on hand. You don't have to do the exact colors that I did, but uh, I will mention them as I go along so that in case you want those exact colors, you can do that. So the bottom wall of this particular building is what I'm going to be painting now. I wanted to experiment with different colors. I had some hydrocal castings from downtown Deco. So I used four different light browns to see which one would give the color tone I preferred. So what I enjoyed doing and decided to use was to use this Ceramco Trail Tan. And I put a small amount in uh, this tray and I'm adding some water directly to it and I'm adding some water right in the little bowl next to it. Now I'm taking a, a fairly uh, soft brush a fairly big soft brush and I'm really stirring it mixing it well putting a small amount on my uh, palette there and adding some more water so that it gets to be very thin we're going to start at the edges we're going to just going to work our way around the structure want to make sure we get it on there evenly and not miss any places this particular color is just going to be the foundation color that we're going to build on uh, as we paint the, the rest of the casting. So I start with the outside edges and then I go to work on the front of the outside stones. And again it's just that same light mixture. I want to make sure we get it covered all the way. These castings are very old, uh, made 40 years ago, so uh, they're very dry and they really absorb this paint very well. So we just work our way around now. Uh, you'll notice I'm not painting stripes up or down or across on the uh, hydrocal, but rather I'm just uh, covering different areas with a, a, a sort of a blotting motion. And that's to make sure that I don't have any stripes show up. We don't want any bold stripes. Uh, the different comp uh, composition of the wa watery paint uh, will, when it dries, it'll, you can be able to see differences in it. So what we want to do now is we want to stop. We want to let this dry completely. Now we're going to work on painting the individual stones around the outside perimeter. These are the larger stones. So the first color that I'm using here is Americana Sierra Burnt Sienna. And it's a, a rust colored color. And I just put a little water next to it and I mix it and we're putting very thin solutions. We're not painting, putting a lot of paint on here. We're just putting enough paint on there to provide the color. And uh, I paint the front and the side, and I also overlap on the back a little bit. Uh, when this is glued together, there's always a chance that that back wall will show a bit. So we want some color on the back wall rather than just having a white line. Uh, if I make a mistake or if I have too much paint on, I use a Kleenex to remove it 
and they just continue to work around the perimeter of the wall, painting the fronts, the sides, and the back. No rhyme or reason to which stones I'm painting which way. It's just I, I want to have a lot of variety in the colors as we go around. Now the next color that I'm using here is Folk Art Teddy Bear Tan. Uh, this is just an, a nice earth color. When you pick your colors, uh, if you're modeling someplace other than Arizona or Colorado, you may not want this much red in your uh, colors of your stones. So just pick whatever looks good to you. Uh, I happen to like uh, the reddish colors, so I use a lot of those. And again, these are just paints I happen to have on hand. Uh, I know I've used them a lot, so I, I sort of know what they look like. We just want to carefully go around and keep painting these individual outside stones. Now where I have my left thumb is in the middle of uh, the wall. And those little stones, uh, we can take some of the paint if you want and paint some of those small stones. We'll do that a little later in this video. But right now I'm just really concentrating on going around the outside walls. When I'm done with a particular color, I don't really wash the brush to clean it. I just wipe off the major amount of paint with a paper towel and then just go right to the next color. This next color we're going to use, this is uh, from Walmart. This is Craftsmart Terracotta. Again, it's a, a reddish color, uh, and we just want a, a variety of different colors. I only use about five or six different colors in this video, uh, but you can use as many as you want. And you can always blend the colors together, too, for, to make for a little variety. I, the colors are primarily earth colors, browns, reds, and there will be a little bit of gray added later but the, the, the earth colors, the, the browns and the reds are the predominant colors that we're going to use here. When I buy these colors, I buy these little two ounce tubes. Uh, they last for a very long time. They're very affordable. Uh, you can get them on sale for generally under a dollar. So what I'll do is I'll just go in and I'll buy a whole bunch of the kind of color I want and uh, just use them as time goes on. Now here you can see that I'm painting some of those small squares, small stones in the center of the, the wall. Okay, the next color we're going here, this is Apple Barrel, is the brand, and it's antique white. Uh, and you can use it to blend with the other colors you already have there, or you can just paint some of the stones this antique white color. We're going to put a dark wash over all of this later. So even a light color like this is going to be quite a bit darker. It's going to be uh, quite a bit more tan when it's all done. But just go around and just uh, paint lots of variety. You can uh, detail the stones if you want, or you can just uh, paint them like I'm doing uh, without putting shadows on them, without putting grain in it. Uh, just, you know, getting the, the general paint on. The reason I'm using gloves is because I don't want the oils from my hand to get into this hydrocal casting. If you uh, let any kind of grease or oil get into the casting, then these paints are not going to be absorbed and it's going to uh, not look right. Of course, if you ever make a mistake when painting a wall, uh, you can always cover it up by putting a sign or an advertising poster over the top of it. That really defines the difference between good modelers and great modelers. Great modelers know how to hide their mistakes. So just painting some of those stones out in the center. 
not trying to make it look like a, a checkerboard pattern or or a, a leopard with spots, but uh, some of those stones can be painted just to add variety to it. And again, just working your way around. Do it so that it looks like right in your eye. You don't want to paint to please me. You don't want to build models to please some guy in Texas. You want to do it to please just yourself. Just continuing to paint. If this is jerky, it's because everything is at double speed. Now I'm putting a little bit of gray on here. And the particular gray I'm using is folk art steel gray. Uh, I just wanted to have a few stones gray uh, because there's a lot of gray materials out there in real life. Where I lived in Alaska, uh, the earth and the stones were all almost black. Uh, it was uh, very hard to find natural materials to, to model with because everything was so dark. So I gather dirt and stuff like that when I travel around. If I see what looks like good dirt, I always stop and uh, get some of it. So just finishing up coloring around here. And when we do this, again, we want to let this dry thoroughly. It's very important to let it dry completely. Once that's dried, we can continue with the next step. Now this is the only color that I think it's important that you actually get. Get any brand of burnt umber. This happens to be apple barrel brand burnt umber, but burnt umber is a standard color, so any brand will work. Now on my tray, I've put a little tiny dab of the paint, got a pretty small brush, and I'm mixing it in the water making it very thin. Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you what happens if you do it while this is dry. Okay, I'm gonna take a little bit of paint and put it on there. And what happens is it doesn't go down into the cracks and I want it to go down into the cracks. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spray this liberally with water, with a little tiny bit of soap in it just to break the surface tension. Then I'm taking a large flat brush, making sure I get all of it done. And then, now watch what happens when we go to do this. As we touch this paint into the cracks, the it just flows right out of the brush into the joints, and even down into the, the main portion of the rocks. Uh, those individual small rocks you can see it really helps bring these out so you just want to go around to make sure you do it on the front and on the sides and just work with it you can let it dry completely and see how it looks and you can go back and do this again later if you want more but it's just really fun to do this when you see the colors just being sucked out into that main part of the wall. Uh, this is just a very pleasant part of the hobby to me. And when you, you're doing this, it just really tones down the, the vibrant colors quite a bit too. But you can see on the, the main body of the rocks, the small rocks, how just adding that really helped bring those individual rocks out. So just continue to work around, put as much on there as you want. Then we're going to set it down and we're going to let it dry. Again, this has to dry completely. So give it at least an hour to, to dry uh, because we're going to soak it again and do that essentially again. So here we've got the wall and you can see how it looks at this point. If you want to make those lines darker, uh, just do it a second time. And you can see how the individual stones in the middle part stand out now. So again, we're using a little bit more of that same paint, 
we're getting it soaked again we're going to take our brush a big flat brush and just brush it over so that it's all covered and we're going to knock off most of it now we're going to take it and this is one of my favorite parts of the hobby is when you take this large bushy brush loaded with the paint and just touch it to the surface it sucks right in and see how it brings out and defines all those stones uh, it's just really a, a, a pleasurable part of the hobby for me but uh, what happens if you get too much just take the corner of a Kleenex and just lightly tap it to absorb it now again we're going to let it dry completely Okay, so this is what our finished wall looks like. Now, you can see the individual stones there in the middle. If you want, just take a variety of colors and paint those stones. I like to paint the larger ones uh, because it's easier to do. But uh, just paint them, and if uh, you need anything touched up, do it. If you make a mistake, uh, put a sign over it uh, to hide it. Well, that's all there is to this. Uh, it's a very simple technique, and it gives good results. So I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.